Hi, and welcome to what's basically my first YouTube video ever. I did a lightning talk at the security conference SECT here in Stockholm this September. And unfortunately, they lost all the recordings of all the presentations due to some technical problems. I had a few friends who wanted to see the talk but couldn't attend. So, by request, this is a re-recording of my lightning presentation at this year's SECT security conference. So, welcome to my presentation, uh, SMT in Reverse Engineering for Dummies. First, very short about myself. My name is Carl, I'm 25 years old. I'm a Master of Science in Computer Science from KTH here in Stockholm. I, I work as an IT security consultant for a company called Bitsec. And I also uh, play a lot of uh, CTF competitions with the team Hacking for Sodium. Well, uh, enough about me, and let's get into it. So, first of all, uh, a little bit about reverse engineering. Uh, why do we reverse engineer? So, basically, uh, reverse engineering is about taking things apart, software, hardware, anything, to understand how it works. And uh, you can do this, this with different goals in mind, and you can have uh, different uh, sub-goals and one of these, if you're reverse engineering software, one of these goals could be how can I get a piece of software to reach a specific state? And this can be solved, of course, in a lot of different ways. And one of the uh, tools you can use is SMT. So, what is SMT? SMT stands for satisfiability modulo theories which basically means that you have a bunch of variables and a bunch of theories and a theory is a bunch of rules that describes how these variables can interact with each other and then you have a bunch of formulas formulas connecting these um, variables together and an SMT problem is that can we find uh, values for all of these variables such that all of these formulas are satisfied according to these theories. A very simple example could just be a linear equation like this and you can probably solve this just in your head very simply and it starts to get a little more complicated if you add a few more variables, a few more equations. But this is still manageable. Maybe you need some pen and paper. You can work this out. But eventually, it gets out of hand. The question is then, can we use some kind of tool? Can we use the computer to help us solving these kinds of problems? And the answer is, of course, yes, we can. And one such tool is the C3 Theorem Prover from Microsoft Research. So this is a general purpose uh, SMT solver. And it uses its own uh, language to express these uh, SMT problems. But it has uh, bindings for several popular languages, including Python, which is what I usually use. And it's worth mentioning that it's completely open source and cross-platform, works on Windows, Linux, well, whatever. So, how can we use this in reverse engineering? We're going to uh, illustrate this with a little bit example. So, I've chosen the popular computer game StarCraft. Um, you know, it's a piece of commercial software which was released in 98, so it's fairly old, which means it has very simple protections and thus uh, acts as a very good uh, starting point for this. So StarCraft requires a serial key to install. And the question is, can we create our own uh, serial key to bypass the validation step? And of course, the answer is yes, we can. So 
we start by looking at the StarCraft installer, which looks something like this. And when you try to install, it wants a CD key like this, which is, uh, as you can see, a 13-digit CD key. Um, now, if we uh, pick apart the installer and look at the resources, we can find um, a strings table which has several entries. A few of them refers to invalid CD keys. And if we then disassemble the installer application, we can find references to those strings. And they are in fact referenced in the um, serial val validation function. So now we have the function that we want to, to look at and try to bypass. And if we look at this uh, function as a call graph, this is the upper half of it and this is the lower half of it, we can see that there are four end states. And the first, the third and the fourth one returns a zero while the second one returns a 1. So I guess is that the second uh, re return state represents a successful validation, while the other represents a failure. And if we now uh, go back to the decompiled version of this function, we can extract this part because, while well, we could look at the whole um, setup function as a whole, the whole, whole uh, installer program as a whole. That can be quite uh, messy. So we can just extract this function and uh, look at the um, constraints it puts on the serial key. We can see that it does uh, loop, it loops over the uh, input and it calculates a, a running sum of the serial key uh, with these multiplication and the XOR operation. And then at the end, it checks that the final digit is equal to the final digit of this sum. So we can formulate that in C3. And this is uh, the Python, uh, using the Python bindings. So here I first uh, import the C3 library, create a solver object, and then we create these 13 um, digits as uh, 13 different variables using a, a bit vector and we do this to have access to the XOR operation. Now we add a constraint saying that the digit has to be between um, 0 and 9 so it has to be a single digit and then we can um, express um, basically like the partial sums throughout this loop so you can think of it as like unrolling the whole loop and then taking this sum variable at each step and creating its own variable. And then you can relate that variable to the previous sum and the current digit. And this is what we do in line 13 to 16. And then the other half of the script, we add the final check that the, the last uh, running sum should be equal to this um, the last digit of the serial. Finally, we pass all these things to C3, it solves the problem, and then we extract uh, the model, which is like all the values that satisfy this, and we format this as a 13 digit serial and outputs this. So if you would run this script, it would output a valid. Uh, serial key for StarCraft. Uh, I won't do that since it's not particularly interesting, but you can download uh, the code from my website. You can look at the description and try it out yourself. So uh, that's all nice, but we had to go through this step of like analyzing the function and um, like interpreting and um, creating these constraints ourselves. So what if we could automate that part as well? And again, the answer is, of course, yes, we can, we can do that. So um, there is a framework called uh, Anger, which is um, citing their website, 
uh, a Python framework for analyzing binaries and it uses both static and dynamic symbolic execution to do this. It's developed mostly by the Computer Security Lab at UC Santa Barbara, so um, huge props to them. And it actually uses C3 internally to uh, solve a lot of the problems. So with Angular, we can approach this in a slightly different way. So this is basically the validation code that we saw earlier. And if we take this and clean it up a little bit, we get something that looks like this. And the reason we do this is, again, that we could look at the whole setup program as a whole, but that's unnecessarily complex since we just we know that we're just interested in this function. So we extract this function and create like a separate small command line program um, that uses this just this function with some inputs. And this is what I usually do when using Anger, just extract the like the core part that you're interested in. Um, you can then basically compile this into a program and then you have basically a, a command line serial key validator program. And then you can create an Anger script which would look so like something like this, uh, in which you say that you you load uh, the validator binary, and then if we look at those, um, we remember those four exit states, and we say that we want to explore this binary, and we want to find this success state, uh, and we want to avoid these three uh, failure states, and um, we just tell Angular to yeah go out on an exploration and find this address, like try to make the program uh, get to this um, position. And if you encounter any of these avoid positions, you have done something uh, wrong and should try another approach. And when we've done this, we just ask it, uh, what input did you use to get to this position? Which is of course then a valid serial key. So running this, again, outputs um, a valid serial key for StarCraft. And again, I won't do this since it's not particularly interesting, but the code is available on my website uh, in the description. So um, yeah, that's basically my short introduction to uh, s solvers in reverse engineering. And uh, if you uh, find this interesting, please uh, leave a comment. Thank you.